God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be our kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So you never forsake those who make their boast of your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. Uh, please don't be shy about grabbing some table space that's in the shade. <laughs> A reading from the book of Isaiah. Say to those who are of a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf unstopped. And the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool and the thirsty ground springs of water. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Continuing on page four of your leaflet, we're going to do uh, pray Psalm 146. We're going to pray it side by side. So we're going to start right down the middle of this table, do that side first, and then that side. Okay? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord, O oh my soul. I will praise the Lord as long as I live. I will sing praises to my God while I have my being. Put not my trust in the Lord nor in any child of earth, for there is no God in them. When they breathe their last, they return to earth, and in that day their thoughts perish. Happy are they who have the God of Jacob for their help, whose will is in the Lord their God, who made heaven and earth, the seas and all that is in them, who keeps his promise forever. Okay, who gives justice to those who are oppressed and food to those who are hungry. The Lord sets the prisoners free. The Lord opens the eyes of the blind. The Lord lifts up those who are bowed down. The Lord loves the righteous. The Lord cares for the stranger. He sustains the orphan and widow, but frustrates the way of the wicked. The Lord shall reign forever. Your God of Zion, throughout all generations. Hallelujah. 
A reading from the book of James. My brothers and sisters, do you with your acts of favoritism really believe in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ? For if a person with gold rings and in fine clothes comes into your assembly, and if a poor person in dirty clothes also comes in, and if you take notice of the one wearing the fine clothes and say, have a seat here, please, while to the poor one you say, stand there or sit at my feet, have you not made distinctions among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Listen, my beloved brothers and sisters, has God not chosen the poor in the world to be rich in faith? and to be heirs of the kingdom that he has promised to those who love him. But you have dishonored the poor. Is it not the rich who oppress you? Is it not they who drag you into court? Is it not they who blaspheme the excellent name that was invoked over you? You do well if you really fulfill the royal law according to scripture. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you show partiality, you commit sin and are convicted by the law as transgressors. Whoever keeps the whole law but fails in one point has become accountable for all of it. For the one who said you shall not commit adultery also said you shall not commit murder. Now, if you do not commit adultery, but if you murder, you have become a transgressor of the law. So, so speak and so act as those who are judged by the law of liberty. For judgment will be without mercy to anyone who has shown no mercy. Mercy triumphs over judgment. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if you say you have faith but do not have works? Can faith save you? If a brother or sister is naked and lacks daily food, and one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm, and eat your fill, and yet you do not supply their bodily needs, what good is that? So, faith by itself, if it has no works, is dead. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus set out and went away to the region of Tyre. He entered a house and did not want anyone to know he was there, yet he could not escape notice. But a woman whose little daughter had an unclean spirit immediately heard about him, and she came and bowed down at his feet. Now the woman was a Gentile of Syrophoenician origin. She begged him to cast the demon out of her daughter. He said to her, let the children be fed first, for it's not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. But she answered him, sir, even the dogs under the table eat the children's crumbs. Then he said to her, for saying that, you may go. The demon has left your daughter. So she went home, found the child lying on the bed, and the demon gone. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went by way of Sidon toward the Sea of Galilee in the region of the Decapolis. They brought him a deaf man who had an impediment in his speech, 
and they begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him aside in private, away from the crowd, and put his fingers into his ears, and he spat and touched his tongue. Then, looking up to heaven, he sighed and said, Ephaphtah, that is, be opened. And immediately his ears were opened and his tongue was released, and he spoke plainly. Then Jesus ordered them to tell no one, but the more he ordered them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. They were astonished by uh, beyond measure, saying, He has done everything well. He even makes the deaf to hear and the mute to speak. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Please be seated. I don't know about you guys, but I feel like this is the way church should be. I said that once to Bishop Bono, and he was shocked to hear me say that I preferred the outdoors uh, to inside a church. But uh, there's something about this that just feels right. I like the, the casualness and uh, the meal that we're going to get to share together in just a bit. Um, but I think that uh, we do... Uh, there's, there's good reason to reflect on one of the readings today in particular, that reading from the book of James, because I think it can uh, increase our understanding of just what it is that we're up to here as we gather in this way. Um, James writes about not showing favoritism or bias. And he talks about the, drain, the dangers of treating others differently based on status or wealth or their appearance. And he tells us that we should love our neighbors as ourselves. But then he has that punchy little line that I think we all know and remember, that faith without works is dead, dead right? Now, you might be thinking, that sounds like an odd sermon for a picnic. I was hoping for something a little upbeat. Well, Notice I'm not preaching on the gospel today. <laughs> I've preached that one many times. You can go back in the archives. But um, there's something that I think is relevant for us about this text today because I think it helps us look forward to or anticipate our future with all of humanity one day in eternity. This can be something that's hard to see here in this life, but I think also particularly in a moment like we find ourselves in today. Because there's a lot that can, a lot going on that can make us feel a little bit on edge. We've got the whole election thing coming up. We know of the various spots of turmoil going on around the world. And it's hard not to carry the weight of those things with us in our awareness as we go through our day. Also, we know that that doesn't really help our relationships to carry that stress and strain with us. We also know, and much ink has been spilt, about our tendency to retreat into our own little corners or silos of sameness, right? We gather, uh, particularly in moments like this, with, with people who think like us or who act like us. And I think part of what James is getting at today is reminding us that the healing of this world that we hope for depends upon us resisting these tendencies. So James wants us to practice seeing each other as God sees us, as the same, as having the same dignity and worth. Now let's remember the context of this. James was talking to those early Christians who uh, were trying to follow Jesus just a few decades after Jesus' departure, and up until this point, Christianity had been a small movement of people who were willing to risk to go and visit the sick or those in prison uh, or to take care of those who couldn't take care of themselves, like widows in that day who didn't have someone to provide for their material needs. And so this news of these people was spreading. And the movement of Christianity and following Jesus was growing. And now all of a sudden, instead of just being this obscure group, 
it was starting to grow and they had people of status and wealth and power in the community wandering into their doors and wanting to figure out just what was going on. And James writes that he notes that these people with higher status and wealth were getting special treatment and this upsets him. He talks about a person walking in in fine clothes and wearing lots of rings and getting ushered right up to the front to the best seat in the house. Meanwhile, someone comes in at the same time who looks disheveled and probably comes in off the streets and they're told to go stand in the back or to come sit on the floor. And James recognizes that this is not in keeping with the way that his brother Jesus came to usher in the kind of community that Jesus was trying to instigate. This is not the kingdom of God that we are called to manifest and live in. So he reminds us that faith without works is dead, that we're to treat each other as equals before God, and that this is not just something we're supposed to believe in our hearts, but we're actually supposed to attempt to live this with our bodies. Now, what does all this have to do with the tensions that we exist within at this moment that I was talking about with the election season and the various wars going on? And what, if anything, does James's message today have to tell us about how we might live together peaceably beyond all these moments of strain. Have you thought much about that yet? What if your candidate doesn't win? How are you going to be at peace with others? <laughs> well, if James were here with us today, I think he would give us some very specific and targeted uh, uh, exercises to try that I think actually do have hope to offer us. Like going to grab a cup of coffee with someone who is going to vote different from us and really listening to what's on their heart. Or maybe he would invite us to be on the search or lookout for people that we think are being excluded or feeling ostracized or maybe just feeling a bit awkward and to actually reach out to them and invite them over to be a part of our table. It's kind of like the message of the junior high lunchroom brought into uh, adulthood. <laughs> Maybe James would tell us whenever we begin to feel a bit superior, like we know more when we're hearing the perspective of another person, that should be a warning to us to stop what we're doing and to pay attention. Are we really hearing them and seeing them as God sees them. Maybe James would tell us that we should start each day looking for common ground with others or seeking opportunities for reconciliation or watching for glimpses of hope in, in ordinary places. Now hear me when I say this next part because at this point you might be thinking, well, gosh, that all sounds very utopic and idyllic, and it totally is not based in reality. And I know that. I get that. And so I, my mind goes to this uh, experiment that I tried when I was living in West Texas. It was also a season before an election. And I wanted to actually try to put this into practice. And so I gathered about a dozen people uh, who were interested in trying this from all different kind of perspectives. So we didn't all think in unison together. And the idea was we're going to consider the political platforms of people who think uh, of the other side and try to practice reading those and considering those charitably. So uh, we gathered for a meal and some drinks. The drinks really helped. <laughs> and I passed out abbreviated forms of the platforms and said, take the one opposite from the one you plan to support, read through it, find at least one point on that page that while you disagree with it, you can understand the potentially good intentions underneath it. So for, for example, 
say the other side wants, um, say you support fracking and the plan you're holding proposes restricting it, maybe you could say, well, I understand that everybody wants clean air and water. And this is how they think they can achieve that. Or maybe the page that you're holding proposes tougher border regulations, and you see those as unnecessary. Could you at least say, well, I understand that they want to protect current citizens and jobs, and that they see this as a path to that. I'll be honest and share that that experiment was kind of rough. <laughs> We got through it, we stayed friends. Um, but even I was surprised at how difficult it seemed to be to hear others charitably. Because it's hard to trust each other's motives. We don't know people's backgrounds and all that goes into informing them. It's hard to see other people as God sees them and how we think God sees us. But it is true, what James is talking about is true. That God, in God's eyes, we are all worth equal dignity and care. James doesn't dive into this deeply, but can we think again about the rich man and the poor man coming into the assembly? And how both of them were brought there by needs that they had, that they hoped would be met in trying this new community. How they were looking for love, how they wanted security, how they wanted peace of mind and a sense of purpose. Maybe they were looking for a way to use their talents to bless others, and they saw this as a possible outlet. That brings me back to this picnic today, because what if we saw us gathered here like this as a glimpse or foretaste into what humanity reconciled together could look like. Young and old, rich and poor, sharing life and food and the bread of life together across differences, enjoying each other's company. Maybe it's a glimpse of that idyllic future that we yearn for, that we can't seem to muster here. We know that trying to set aside our biases is a hard task. If I were to say to you, all right, everybody, go home, uh, go into the rest of your week, I want you to not let yourself see anybody else through a lens of bias, uh, take all your judgments away. It'd be kind of like saying, okay, go home and be the next Winston Churchill, or <laughs> Mahatma Gandhi, or Nelson Mandela. We can't do it. Not on our own. Thankfully, we don't have to. Thankfully, we can catch ourselves with the Holy Spirit's prodding when we walk past that person cleaning the restrooms. And we don't pay attention to them. And then we realize that. And we can stop and say hello. Or maybe when we feel ourselves sitting up a bit straighter and showing deference when we're in a meeting with somebody who's wearing a fancy watch. And then it clicks in our head what we're doing, and we can realize they're just a child of God with the same needs and yearning that I have. These are opportunities for us to recognize that God is calling us to live differently, to take those natural tendencies that we have and then die to them. Scripture talks about dying to ourselves, right? And I think this is what it's getting at. When we see those little parts of ourselves that don't reflect God's character, can we at least take notice of that and say, yeah, that's not right. God, I give it to you. I'm going to try and be the kingdom of God and an ambassador of that a little differently. I think one of the saving graces of all this is in identifying where that will to live differently comes from. It's put inside of us by God, our Creator. We yearn for the reality that James is talking about because it sounds good to our ears. We think, yeah, if, if that were possible, I would absolutely love to live like that. And that's what we get to practice here together. Elsewhere, Jesus tells us, I am the vine and you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. 
I think this is our key for attempting this. We can't live as James tells us by sheer determination and willpower. We can only do it by staying connected to God and God's people. Relying upon God to point out when we don't fit with this vision and then dying to that part over and over and inviting God to fill that vacuum. So your homework for this fall is let's practice this. Let's try this. There's no better season than one like this, surrounded by people who are stressed out and anxious, and where there's division all around us. Let's remember that it's not our job to have responses to other people's perspectives or to have all the answers. We just have to keep loving others as God loves us and dying to those parts of ourselves that would stand in the way. James reminds us what is always and eternally true, that God loves us without any partiality. And I think within that we find that God promises to be with us, helping us to live in this fashion. So let's give it a try. Amen. 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 Please stand with me as you are able. And turning to page 7 in your leaflets, let us affirm our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, He is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. This Sunday we will do as we did last Sunday with the choir droning on one note and we will sing our response, we pray to you, O Lord, at the appropriate time. <clears throat> Lifting our voices to intercede on behalf of the needs of this world, let us pray, singing. We pray to you, O Lord. Loving God, you are present in the wideness of the universe and in the tiniest of your creatures. You embrace with tenderness all that exists. <clears throat> Pour out on us the power of your love that we may protect life and beauty. Fill us with peace that we may live as your people, harming no one. <clears throat> Heavenly Creator, we pray to you, O Lord. O God of the poor, help us to rescue the abandoned and forgotten of this earth, so precious in your eyes. 
bring healing to our lives so that we may protect and not prey upon this world, that we may sow beauty, not destruction, touch the hearts of those who look only for gain at the expense of the poor and the earth. Heavenly Creator, we pray to you, O Lord. Teach us to discover the worth of each and everything, to be filled with awe and contemplation, to recognize that we are profoundly united with every creature as we journey towards your infinite light. Heavenly Creator, we, we pray to you, O Lord. We lift up all the nations of the world that there may be peace and harmony both here and abroad, remembering especially the people of Israel and Palestine, the people of Ukraine and Russia, the people of Sudan. Remind us of our interconnectedness with each other and that we are to treat all as neighbors. Give us thoughtful and wise leaders who will put the needs of others first and protect the weak. We pray especially for the United States this election season. Let us choose leaders who will seek justice and peace. Heavenly Creator, we pray to you. We pray to you for the people of God throughout the world. We pray for our presiding bishop, Michael, our presiding bishop-elect, Sean, our bishop, Michael, and for all ministers of your gospel. Bless, sustain, and guide them in their ministries. Heavenly Creator, we pray to you, Lord. Today, we pray for all in need of your healing touch, especially Mary Jean Jones and her family, Jean, Joanne, and Tori. We pray for the sick and the needy, Mateo Castillo, Lauren Chavez, Burton Ann Dales, Gerard Ferrenbach, Kathy Hollingsworth, John Maito, Marty Raff, Judy Teeter, Santos Torres, Roseanne Lithoil, Chris Tremel, Julie Guilfer, Bob and Jenny Lana, and any others whom we name either silently or loud. We pray to you also for those who have died, remembering especially Alex, and any others who may be on our hearts today. Heavenly Creator, we pray to you, O Lord. Finally, in a moment of quiet, let us each bring our own needs and cares and gratitudes to you especially praying for our vestry, placing them and us in the palm of your hand. Pray. Heavenly Creator, we pray, pray to you, O Lord. Great Creator, gather into your hands the fragments of our lives, the ligaments of our prayers. Hold them tenderly. We ask that you grant them in accordance with our needs and your knowledge, and always to your will. In your Son's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. 
We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And, and also with you. two stations for bread, two stations for wine, however you can filter into the middle, just come up and have bread and have wine, and if it's a big mess, you know what, God's glorified anyway, and we'll get to practice again, because also there's the food line, and the drinks over here, so uh, it looks like they've set it up to where we need to start on this end and go this way, uh, and what I want to say is because of what, uh, so for the youth, fifth grade and up, uh, we're going to have, yeah, seriously. Uh, for the youth, I would ask that you let the youth and any chaperones or adults helping with them to go first through the food line before anybody else so that we can go back here. We're going to meet back here. We're going to eat. We're going to have a lesson, and we're going, going to go on a little hike. And whatever time we finish, I'm imagining it'll be about roughly an hour later for you parents to come pick them up. Now, parents are welcome to join. In fact, I'd like a few chaperones. Uh, <laughs> in, case need, hint, hint, hint. in case I need to carry someone back, maybe people with first aid knowledge. You know, uh, anyway, uh, yeah, and please do bring a bottle of water, kids, or a cup of water or something. Uh, I have sunscreen for anybody who forgot it. So, so last year we did a collection and a half 
And you bet me that I would not bless the collection in the hat. Do you think we should do that again this year? Well, we have baskets. Yeah, right here. Oh, baskets. God. I mean, I'm cool with the hat idea, too. Whatever comes before us. So, a couple, a couple of quick other things. Uh, so, some of you all know we had uh, a group of mostly veterans who were meeting and reading a few books that are veteran related um, over, through the winter and spring. And that group's continued to meet, and they're uh, still very energized about that ministry, as am I. Uh, and so we're forming a chapter at St. Chad's of Episcopal Veterans Fellowship. And one of the things we want to do is try and put on events for other veterans to get involved. There will be something to invite people to. Uh, one of the first things is on Veterans Day, Dick Steele is pulling this together largely, uh, and thank you for that. But we're going to show a film. Uh, called Apache Blues, uh, which talks about the experience of coming home from Vietnam and not being welcomed after all that they've been through. And so if you want a preview of that, now you can come on Veterans Day at the cathedral, but if you want a preview of that tomorrow at 6, they'll be gathering to watch that at St. Chad's. So also in the back of your bulletin, you'll see a thing about the Holy Cow survey. Um, please participate in this. The more people that get involved, the better the information we'll be able to collect. And we want to, you know, kind of set some goals for the future based on what we understand the needs to be. And if you don't respond, we won't know. Uh, there is a way to do it non-electronically if for some reason you really don't want to work on the computer. Uh, and you just need to let me know or Leslie know and we'll figure out who to get you to to help with that. Oh, let's see. Okay, Jim, yes, a word from your senior word. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning Jim. Where'd you stay, isn't it? Yeah, it's absolutely yeah. beautiful. can ask for better weather. Um, I just wanted to touch on something rather quickly. The vestry right now is uh, looking at what we want to do in terms of things like renovation or capital improvement around the church. Well, it turns out we, we do have some money set aside for a building fund. This building fund was created in 2008, and it was started with the idea we'd have new construction, there would be a new sanctuary. Well, we've come to the realization that that money is not going anywhere. We didn't have enough to borrow. We, we wouldn't have had to borrow to build. Uh, the money has grown through investments and interest, but there's still not enough for new construction. So what the vestry would like to do is to we, I guess, give it a different name, essentially, and a new purpose in that we could use that money to do renovations of our current building or capital improvements. But the congregation needs to know this first because the congregation contributed to the building fund uh, they have over the years. And we wanted to hear back from anybody who had any questions about why are you changing it or, you know, what the money is going to go to the building. But if you have any questions whatsoever, any comments, have any concerns, come to me or Edwina or to Father. And we can answer any questions you might have. So, thanks. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
Prayer C, found in your bulletins. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God thanks and praise. God of all power, ruler of the universe, you are worthy of glory and praise. Glory, glory to you forever and ever. At your command, all things came to be the vast expanse of interstellar space, galaxies, suns, the planets in their courses, and this fragile, fragile Earth, our island home. By your will, they were created and have their being. From the primal elements, you brought forth the human race and blessed us with memory, reason, and skill. You made us the rulers of creation, but we turned against you and betrayed your trust, and we turned against one another. Have mercy, Lord, for we are sinners in your sight. Again and again you called us to return. Through prophets and sages you revealed your righteous law. And in the fullness of time you sent your only Son, born of a woman, to fulfill your law, to open for us the way of freedom and peace. By his blood he reconciled us. By his wounds we are healed. <laughs> and therefore we praise you joining with the heavenly chorus, with prophets, apostles, and martyrs, and with all those in every generation who have looked to you in hope to proclaim with them your glory in their unending hymn. Of me. 
remembering now his work of redemption and offering to you this sacrifice of thanksgiving. We celebrate his death and resurrection as we await the day of his coming. Lord God of our fathers, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, open our eyes to see your hand at work in the world about us, Deliver us from the presumption of coming to this table for solace only and not for strength, for pardon only and not for renewal. Let the grace of this holy communion make us one body, one spirit in Christ, that we may worthily, worthily serve the world in his name. Risen Lord, be known to us in the breaking of the bread. Accept these prayers and praises, Father, through Jesus Christ, our great High Priest, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit, your Church gives honor and glory and worship from generation to generation. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father in heaven, for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Hallelujah. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
And let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us the spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Benedict us, please. Sure. Today. Let us pray. Holy Mommy, thank you for this moment outside together as a foretaste of the union before us one day. We strain towards that and we look forward to that with hope. And we ask that you empower us here and now uh, to be messengers of your grace and equality and oneness. Lord, we ask your blessing on the food that we're about to share together. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, may God's blessing be upon you now and always. Amen. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.